What's up everyone, welcome back to another review. This time we're taking a look at Ghost, starring Patrick Swayze, Demi Moore, Ruby Goldberg, directed by Jerry Zucker. Ghost tells the story of Sam Wheat, a banker who is shot and killed during a robbery, but though it's eventually revealed to be a murder and a giant conspiracy, and now Sam Wheat has to pretty much try and protect his girlfriend, from Demi Moore, from suffering the same fate as him. Okay, that is the overall general plot line of Ghost. Let's talk about it. I love this movie. I think this movie is great. I remember watching this movie so many times when I was a kid. 30 years later, I still think Ghost is a really good movie. Now, this is not my favorite Patrick Swayze movie of all time. Though, this is the first movie that I can remember watching Patrick Swayze in. So, like, Ghost was my first exposure to Patrick Swayze as an actor. And as a young kid, and even now... I think Patrick Swayze is fantastic as in the role of Sam Wheat. Patrick Swayze as an actor, I never feel gets enough credit because the man was ultra, ultra talented. He could do action and he can do drama like Ghost and have a lot of gravitas to it. And his portrayal of Sam Wheat is fantastic. He has the right amount of uh, somberness and comedy to the role of Sam Wheat. Like he has the uh, dramatic somberness when he's, you know, talking, when he's interacting with his. Uh, with his girlfriend, uh, 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 Molly, played by Demi Moore. And I love the chemistry between Swayze and Demi Moore. And if the, and if the chemistry and love story between these two characters that did not work with these two actors, then this movie would have really felt fallen apart and really felt flat on its face because the heart of the movie is the over and is the romance between Sam and Molly and Patrick Swayze and Demi, and Demi Moore pulled it off fantastically. I mean, these two have probably the, mo the most iconic scenes in cinema. You know, the in the Potter scene to Unchain Melody. And then uh, near the end of the movie, they share a dance when uh, Sam Wheat takes possession of Otome Brown's body. And they share a dance also to Unchain Melody. So like these two, this movie has two very iconic scenes that are very, very sentimental. I mean, when you look back at them now, yeah, it's kind of sappy and overly done. But from a 1990 standard, I mean, yeah. They're iconic scenes, and Demi Moore and Swayze were great in both those scenes. You really feel the tenderness of it, and I appreciate that. Uh, now, aside from Swayze and Demi Moore, who I think were great in this movie, you also have Whoopi Goldberg and Tony Goldwyn, who I thought were also just as good in this movie as well. Oh. Uh, Tony Goldwyn plays Carl, who is Sam's best friend, and it's actually Carl who pretty much orchestrates the who orchestrates uh, his friend pretty much getting killed by this man named Lee Lopez. It's revealed that Carl is actually doing money laundering for a bunch of uh, for a bunch of drug dealers and he needs a security code and also to transfer funds to an account and pay these drug dealers off. Sam just happens to have the codes to set account. So he orchestrates a plan to kind of get those codes but in so doing so Willie also kills Sam as pretty much a favor to Carl. And pretty much once Sam dies, Carl starts to make the move on Molly. Pretty much revealing Carl, pretty much being revealed to be a scumbag of a human being. And I thought Tony Goldman played the role really, really well. I like him in this movie. I like the I like the chemistry that he and Swayze have when they're friends. And I like how he completely turns into a complete asshole who you can't wait to see die. And Carl's death in this movie is really gruesome. You no, know, for a PG-13 movie, they really push the boundary of this. Of, they really push the boundaries. I mean, Carl gets impaled by a broken, by a broken window and by shard, I should say. And it doesn't have a cutaway. Like you literally see the window shard penetrate Carl and blood splatter all over it. It's a graphic rated R type of death. And for a nicer guy, it wouldn't have happened better. So, good job on Tony Goldwyn's part. Really good actor. Uh, Whoopi Goldberg has. Awesome in this movie. Whoopi Goldberg, Goldberg is hilarious as Audrey Brown, who is the, pretty much a schemer who thinks she has psychic abilities. Though it turns out she actually can communicate with the other side because she's the only one that can hear Sam. And the comedic timing between Goldberg and Swayze is fantastic. These two are a very hilarious duo, but the both of them also have very poignant and touching scenes to them as well. And a real friendship develops between Otome and Sam that I think is actually really understated that this movie does not... That I don't think this movie gets enough credit for. You know, I got no complaints with Goldberg in this movie. She 
definitely earned her Academy Award for this movie. She earned it. She brought her A-game and You can tell she brought her A-game. Good stuff. Uh, the overall direction and cinematography in this movie is well done. Jerry Zuckner is more known for his comedies. So I can't, I actually appreciate the fact that he brought a more somber tone to this movie. Though it does have a lot of good comedic elements to it. Particularly, like I said, when Swayze and Goldberg are on screen together, their comedic timing is really, really funny. And the movie also has unrelated comedic moments to itself as well that never undercuts the drama or the tension. Particularly when you get to the last 20 minutes of the movie where it really starts to kick in. And I'm going to say this. Uh, the last 20 minutes of this movie is actually really good. And this is, and the movie actually goes really, really dark. Because <clears throat> whenever, when, like, when the characters of Willie and Carl die, demons from hell literally drag them to hell. Now, looking back at it, yeah, it's kind of hokey. It is kind of hokey and kind of silly, <laughs> to be honest with you, when you look at it. And I would not have had the demons actually come up from hell to drag Carl away. Hell, I wouldn't even have had the whole Stairway to Heaven scene at the end of the movie, which I, oh, which I think is really sappy. And I clearly did not really care for it at all. I mean, I mean that's the movie pretty much hitting, hitting, hitting you over the head with its message. Hey, there's a heaven and there's a hell. I mean, come on. I, I would have done without that. Uh, another thing about this movie that I thought was really, really good and that I thought was kind of would like to see more of. There's this uh, subway ghost. Played by Vintis Gavelli, who knows how to pretty much manipulate objects and is able to uh, manipulate touching things and pushing things and breaking things and things like that. And Sam pretty much goes to him for training. And at first, the subway ghost rejects him, but then they start. And then but then he starts to be like his mentor and trainer and starts to show him these things. I would have actually liked to have seen more scenes with Gavelli and Swayze because I thought these two had a really good untapped chemistry and the whole idea of uh, this subway ghost being a mentor to Sam, I would have liked to have seen more of it because I like Scavelli's performance. He's a, Scavelli is a very underappreciated character actor and the subway ghost, even when I watched this movie as a kid, that character always stood out to me. Like I always remembered that subway ghost from this movie whenever I would see it because Scavelli just left that kind of an impression on me and I would like to see more scenes even then with that character and actually like to see well, actually would like to know more about his history uh in the brief moments that we do get with the subway ghost i like it and the bits of his history that we do get is actually pretty interesting uh because he claims that he was pushed when a, in a uh into a subway car and that's how he died but the movie kind of leaves it open what did he was he pushed or did he jump in front of the train that's like i would have you know i would like to see more of that history and know more about that history. I'd actually like to see more of the chemistry develop between Savelli and Swayze because I enjoyed it. But what we did get, I do enjoy. It. And uh, I also like the scenes when, when Swayze first dies, which is actually a really, really good scene when Willie does kill Swayze. And like, it's a really real and emotional scene. And you can tell that Swayze, that Sam Wheat is horrified that he's dead and that he's a ghost and he doesn't know what's happening. And when he interacts with other ghosts, he's trying to piece together how to, how to make things work. And I like how, I like how Sam Wee gradually accepts that he's a ghost and gradually starts to understand the rules. Uh, I like all that stuff. It's, it's, an, it's really enjoyable and fun to see. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, with all that being said, I do thoroughly enjoy Ghost. Thirty years later, this is still a really good movie and a very good and actually one of my mo one of the better romantic uh, movies out there. It's got a good blend of mystery. It's got a good blend of thriller and comedy. It's got some really well-placed horror elements so i think the stuff with the demons can be a little hokey but the other things it works and i like it a lot and i and i still enjoy this film so yeah to me ghost is going to get a solid eight out of ten i enjoy it i like it let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below like the video and subscribe and i will check you back next time for more